John, great to have you with us this afternoon. So, look, if Israel do plan to go into Rafah, it seems like they will do. Can they do that without US weapons? Probably the short answer, Commander, is yes. But it's worth pointing out, although President Biden has made this statement about the weapons, he hasn't stopped defensive weapons going into Israel. Iron Dome, that sort of system, they'll still be providing those. I think the main report seemed to be around the 2,000-pounders and the 500-pound bombs. Uh, about uh, 1,800, 2,000-pound bombs were due to arrive. These are pretty significant weapons, twice the size of the weapons we used to carry on the fighter jets before. So they're good for bunker busting, but they cause a huge amount of damage. The 500-pound bombs are much more surgical strike. Um, but Israel will always have a stockpile of weapons themselves. America would normally drip-feed those in to keep them topped up. And Rafa's a relatively small area, so it's very likely that the Israelis will still have enough weapons um, regardless. I suspect this is more about the politics. You remember the uh, International Court of Justice? They said Israel needs to do more to, to protect the civilian population. There's a lot, um, uh, particularly around Rafa. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if any nation provides weapons to a nation that then contravenes international law, they become culpable. So if, if Rafa was to become subjected to an Israeli assault, Americans would feel vulnerable. I think that's why they've made this statement uh, just to try to mitigate the risk. OK, now, if the IDF do go into to Rafa, what, what can we expect the fighting to be like there? Well, the headline stuff, obviously, the IDF will be looking for the four battalions of Hamas fighters. It's less than 2,000 fighters. Makes it sound like a military organisation. It's not. It's a whole collection of, of cells uh, that, because they're not a conventional military force. Militarily, Israelis will overmatch Hamas by over 20 to 1 on the wow. ground, and they've got tanks and they've got fighter jets. So it's no competition ever. The complicating factor is these 1.4 million uh, refugees that are in the area. And, of course, America said you've got to come up with, up with a plan to get rid of them. That plan seems to be twofold, one of which is carrot, one of which is stick. The mm -hmm. aid seems to be the carrot. If you look down here, both of the Rafa crossing and the Kerem Shalom crossing have been closed. The areas crossing to the north has been opened. And if you remember that US pontoon that was uh, being built to try and get huge amounts of aid in there, that looks like it's being uh, complete at the moment to the mm -hmm. eastern Mediterranean. Here's a picture taken in late uh, April. But we also understand that the uh, first ship with, uh, uh, was left earlier on today from Cyprus. Mm -hmm. So all of that will start to provide an aid carrot to the north to try and bring people north. And, of course, the stick part of it is that if we go to southern Rafa, they've already started the operation there. And although they haven't actually gone into Rafa itself, they've made mm -hmm. clear that they're intent uh, to do so. The challenge, of course, is that it won't just be about the fighting. The Gaza Metro, remember that underground series of tunnels, they'll create a real problem for the Israeli Defence Forces down to the south. Second factor is Iran will not want to let this fight go unrecognised. They'll almost certainly be incentivising Hezbollah to the north and the Houthis. We've already heard today that there is a series of attacks gone on in the shipping by the Houthis. And, of course, Hamas might blend in with the civilian population just to get away. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to take the weapons. What happens to the hostages? Not ideal. But regardless, Hamas will probably try and inflict a pretty heavy price on uh, the Israelis for going in um, uh, as they go in. This, but, however, this sort of feels like the final chapter for Hamas, however it plays out. And the challenge then is, what next? We've always said there's no military solution to what's going on there. Once the uh, Netanyahu's finished this latest offensive, we'll have to see out what the day after all this brings. Mm -hmm. But it, there has never been a military solution to this region. The problems will remain unless there's a political solution that's brought to bear. Absolutely right. OK, Sean, appreciate the analysis, as always. Thank you for that.